Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies, who are at the moment on the cusp of an honest Mirabalis. Um, I've been thinking about songs, Meredith. What do you think of this one? Uh, it's to the tune of Copacabana. It's our honest Mirabalis. Huh? She doesn't know Copacabana. I'm an old person who's been forced to glimpse the abyss of death that awaits me. Thanks, Meredith. Um, today we're taking on West Ham United, Rosianna's beloved West Ham United. Uh, Rosianna, my friend, one of the earliest readers of Looking for Alaska, also uh, my pro producing partner, um, assistant. She plays many roles in our lives, not just mine, but also Meredith's and everyone uh, whose life she touches because she's so competent and great. Don't you agree? We're all, we're all hardcore Rosianna fans around here. That said, we're going to destroy West Ham United. We're going to make them cry. Their captain, Mark Noble, is going to pee himself from being upset. We're in sixth place, but as you can see, we're only two points behind fourth. It's going to be a tight, 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 tight race with eight games to go. Um, what were we just talking about, Meredith? Oh, what would happen if I won the lottery? Um... Yeah, so I'm going to talk about how my life would change if I won the lottery. Uh, Meredith, have you ever watched any of these TV programs like I Won the Lottery, the uh, reality shows people won the lottery, and then you see what happened to their lives. A lot of times it got worse, sometimes it got better, but they always bought really, really ugly art. Like the one thing that you can always count on is that they commissioned a $20,000 uh, portrait of themselves and their dog um, that hangs above the mantle, and you're like, man, I could have made you that portrait for five bucks. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I don't play the lottery, for the record. Um, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a tax. Oh! Oh, Ball John Green, you've got to get that on frame. I feel like Ball John Green is trying to do a little too much right now, Meredith, because he know, he has, it still hasn't been decided which John Green is going to retire to take care of JJ full-time at the end of the season. But like, I just feel like they're both trying to do so, so much to make the um, – to make the Wimbly Wombly fans happy, um, and they just everybody wants to see them kiss the badge one more time, and I, I feel that way too. But you've got to, you know, we we're playing for a lot right now. This is not a time for ceremony. This is a time for trying to win some soccer games. Um, not good. So, uh, I mean, first off, I I I kind of did win the lottery. Uh, it's essentially random. When a book becomes as successful as The Fault in Our Stars, there are far better books that never become successful, and there are uh, there are bad books that become incredibly successful. Uh, it's not completely random, obviously. John Green to John Green! Oh! See, not as fast as they used to be, but still all the passion that you could ask for. He went face first into that goalie. Um, so they were offside because they were naughty. That's naughty. Um, you know, like, and I, I'm very much aware of the fact that, like, The Fault in Our Stars didn't become so successful because it was better than any other book that year or because um, of, a, a, of anything else that was really in my control. It, there was a confluence of factors, and I'd like to think that I had something to do with some of them. But, oh, oh, God, John Green wants to score so bad. Um, but, you know, it is also, there, it, it's, it's, it's basically winning the lottery. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I should talk frankly about how my life changed and how it didn't. I mean, people who win the lottery, I don't, y when we watch those lottery shows, you often see that like people who win the lottery, their lives become way worse because like people start asking them for money and they start feeling like they've got to give money to their friends and yada, yada, yada. I never really had any of that because my friends are, are cool and um i don't know they never really understood what i did and most of them were more successful than me anyway and they thought i was like uh you know they were supportive of me but in the way that you're supportive uh and also a little bit bemused um so it was none of that stuff um i mean certainly like i i felt a set of responsibilities that i didn't feel before you know like way more people asked me for for signed books and many of those people were people who uh i i really wanted to sign books for because they were living with cancer or because uh you know they, they, it was part of their make a wish or whatever and um, but you know so i guess like that that's wonderful stuff and like work that i feel so lucky to be able to do and honestly like the the, the thing that i probably enjoy most about my job other than playing fifa um uh, but like that, that kind of thing definitely increased. But again, I feel lucky that I, I like that stuff and sort of 
uh, in, you know, enjoy it and really feel like my, my for, in a selfish way, like my life is enriched by it. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that the other thing that, that changed uh, was that there was like a lot of a lot of scrutiny. Um, and I guess that's probably the same if you win the real lottery. Maybe it's more local scrutiny than like national scrutiny. But like, you know, like suddenly, like if I said something on my Tumblr, like Entertainment Weekly might report it. And I wasn't used to that idea that my Tumblr could be like a news outlet. I always thought of my Tumblr, you know, as a Tumblr. Um, it's a place where you say things that maybe you later regret and then apologize for instead of a place where you make like uh, capital O official statements about your feeling about capital I important things. Um, not playing great against West Ham here. A little bit of a concern. Uh, we don't want to break up our honest Mirabalis um, due to West Ham United. Great punch from Seb Brown. He came way out and he just said, I am the strongest man in this town. And I always appreciate that about Seb. Something I've always liked about him. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, obviously, like, our lives changed a lot financially, and that, that allowed – Ball John Green is just a big person. It wasn't a foul. It was just a, something that happens when you're a big guy. Um, uh, you know, and for – I mean, Sarah, Sarah – you know, I'm lucky to be married to, to Sarah, and, and she, you know – I think has kept the values of our family in in the same place that they always were, and um, and that's to be you know focused on the stuff that uh, that that we've decided to uh, focus our our lives on, um, you know stuff like the um, uh, empowerment of women, especially in uh, less developed nations where they may have less access to things like bank accounts and uh, and education. Um, and that's that's a big focus of, of our family, and then and then global health and poverty, particularly among uh, children and and families, um, so that we can uh, you know lessen the massive gulf uh, between uh, wealthy countries and poor ones, and also between uh, wealth and poverty within countries. Um, so th you know like. It's allowed us to do a lot more of that stuff to be to support um, organizations that we really care about to um, and and because I have a bigger platform now to to do a you know to to be able to like talk about that stuff to more people so that's 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 a way that my life has definitely changed and like that's uh, but but again like that's a great way the only way that it's been worse is like people coming by that the house and stuff um or or visiting us uh against uh, uninvited which i guess isn't a visit so. oh no disaster diame our honest mirabalis is suddenly an honest succubus oh no meredith we got to focus do you feel like we haven't been focused? Because I've been talking about myself, the most interesting person in the world to me. That's the problem. I've been, an, I've been a narcissist. Um, God, that sucked. All right, let's do better. Let's do better. Um, oh, bad pass. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, this is not the kind of game that you have if you want to finish in the top four. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I guess, so I guess, like, people coming by the house, the, the sort of, like, overall feeling of intense scrutiny, I don't really, I, as I've said before, like, I, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I am extremely uncomfortable with a lot of the uh, things that accompany celebrity or, like, celebrityness. but I also feel like I can't really um, say no to a lot of those things. Like, I, I feel like I can't say no to, like, being on television and stuff, especially when the movies are about to come out, because... I'm proud of the movies. I'm, pr I'm really proud of Paper Towns. I'm really proud of the people who made it. Um, and, I, you know, I don't want to disappoint them. Um, and, I, and I want to I, I give th this awesome thing that they made every opportunity to succeed. And, and part of that is me having to sort of, you know, li do this stuff. And sometimes it can be fun. Like, definitely, there's some stuff that's just amazingly fun. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. How did I ever get to do this? But some stuff, it's just like, it's not, it's just not me. Like, it, you know, like, I'm, I, you know, yeah, it's just not something that I feel like I'm good at or comfortable with or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's the, that's the only way that, 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 that life has been worse. Um, as far as, like, the other thing that, that I always thought I would do when I won the lottery is I always thought I would retire. Um, like, I always, I've always talked about retiring and dreamed of retiring. I have a lot of, uh, 
I got like a retirement clock on my computer and everything. And I've always been, you know, I've always been pretty like focused on retirement saving and stuff, even when I was in my 20s. That is a great ball. That's a great ball, and it's ball John Green, and he can't get there. Oh, it's so disappointing. we got to make substitutions, don't you think, Meredith? Who are we bringing out? Who are we bringing in? Yeah, you're the assistant coach. This is what you do. What do you think? All right, the golden child, he's coming out. I totally agree with you, by the way. It's time. Hell's Pels or, uh, yeah, probably, or, or Correa. Correa, okay. And then anything else? You think you should, uh, it's time for the greens to go. The, you know, they do tire more quickly than they used to. There's no doubt about it. So bring on Dicko and Dini. All right. Those are our three substitutions, Dicko, Dini, and Correa. We've got 20 minutes to try to bring a turnaround to this game. It's been a brutal first 70 minutes. I would take a draw at this point because the main thing about the Honest Mirabalis is that we've only lost one game, and it was a game that was uh, part of a home and away, uh, and we ended up winning it. So, oh, oh, ah, oh. the golden child, you're right, Meredith. He's having a bad game. There's no two ways about it. He's struggled in general lately. I think he's going through an awkward phase. You know, for me, it was in middle school. For him, it's when he's 13. Um, but it always, yeah, it's different. Did you have an awkward phase, Meredith? She says her whole life was an awkward phase. You don't seem awkward at all now. You're put together. You're professional. You're grown up. You don't have, like, the main thing about the awkward phase for me, it's when your um, ears are way out of whack with the rest of your head. And your ears are completely proportional. I would never say any. Oh, yeah, that's true. They're covered. I don't even know what's going on back there. Could be weird. You might be right. All right. Pass the ball. Yeah, and turn. you got to be stronger than that, buddy. Oh! All right, let's make our three substitutions and hope for the best from this corner kick. But yeah, I always thought that I would like quit working and it turns out that I love, I'm in an incredibly fortunate position to love what I do and to, to love the people I work with and to want to keep working with them and um, I have no desire. Oh, he's a little bit hurt. I have no desire uh, really ever to stop. Um, I love collaborating with my brother. I love making stuff um, with the people who work here. Oh, Zaya! Oh, Zaya! Oh, oh! Oh, Zaya, 85th minute, a crucial point. Meredith, watch this shot. How did that even go in? It went through 74 people. Oh, it's one of the greatest goals in the history of the Wimbly Wobblies, and it's scored by a defender. What the frick just happened? Oh, Zaya. Oh, Zaya. Oh, Zaya. Oh, Zaya. Oh, that's the same as Shakira. Hips don't lie. Oh, Zaya. Oh, Zaya. All right, let's go for the win. Let's go for the win. Let's go for the win. That's what stands, what's, a draw is, a, a draw continue, allows our honest Mirabalis to continue. A win puts us in the driver's seat for the top four. And uh, with just seven games remaining, that's huge. Come on. That's not a bad ball. That's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, can we pull that back for a foul? Nope. Okay. That's not bad, though. I don't dislike that. Cut back. Pass. Nope. Better passing, buddy. They're clogging up the passing lanes. They're desperate. They want that draw. They need that draw. Oh, yes, no. Ah. I mean, how could I ever quit being a Wimbly Wombly? No matter how many lotteries I won, this is just in my blood. It's who I am. I love this club. Owned by its fans. Coming back from 1-0 down to preserve the 2017 Honest Mirabalis. Still haven't lost a game that we didn't immediately revenge. Okay, it's not three points that we needed, but it's one point that's better than none. So congratulations to the Wimbly Womblies. Hopefully, that put us a little closer to the top four. I'll let you know next game. Thanks for watching. You guys are the best. Best wishes.